whenever y'all hear that sound, interns, the Three's Company thing, that means it's a phone call. Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Tony and Griff Show, hello. Hey, what's good? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, White Shoes, how you want to be introduced? Is White Shoes or David? I tell you what, as the illest of the Jews, Mr. White Shoes, checking in on the Tony and Griff show. Y'all were answering for a second. I thought maybe I had dialed the wrong number. I was like, oh, no. Nah. The <laughs> illest of the Jews, Mr. White Shoes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, White Shoes is a comedian, but uh, also a veteran. Uh, from the United States military, and just really tell us a little bit about your background and why we're about to make you our um, political guru. Yeah, tell you us like why. That Jew guru. <laughs> well, <laughs> our Jew actually, Yeah, Jew How about that? <laughs> I'm actually uh, half Italian and half Jewish, which is the best of the other white meat. And uh, I've been involved in politics all my life. I come from a political family where, where from my mother to my grandfather on, on both sides, I've had a huge heart for the community. And uh, my, like I said, my mom, she works in the church, so I was raised in the church. And uh, my grandfather on my mother's side was a union organizer back in the 50s and 60s. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I got a real big heart for the community. I've actually worked in politics and been in charge of campaigns since high school. Okay. And, uh, yeah, former cadet at North Georgia Military College. Oh, man. Uh, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Look, don't say that. Don't say that. Well, I I, I tell you what, without all those accolades, I I know one thing for sure. Um, the, The brother knows his stuff when it comes to political news man um you watched the state of the union last night i'm sure because i was talking to you while it was on uh what what's your what are your takes on it before we tell and you ours? are you a republican or a democrat can i ask that i am an independent okay, okay. and i'm are you a tea party? does that make you a tea party member yeah that's what i was going no 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 are we allowed to curse on this show you can cuss. Why? Well, yeah. No, you can't cuss. Just making sure. All right, well, <laughs> hell no. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just to be clear. But, no, I'm a, I'm a full, full-blooded full independent. I'm conservative on some issues, and I'm liberal as hell on others. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I, I'm an independent. I vote for the man. I, I'm, I would actually describe myself as a Lincoln Republican and a Kennedy Democrat. Okay. Okay. So, people, you see, he knows. Like he he really knows what he's talking about. What do you think about the State of the Union address last night, homie? Uh, I really, I mean, it's always you know a pleasure to hear Obama talk because he really is like our generation's Kennedy. Like he really is special. And two years into his presidency, he hasn't really accomplished too much, but. If he gets reelected, he has the capability of changing so much in this nation. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that he's been brought to the center, and I really won't disagree with that at all whatsoever. But I actually think it's a shame because 20 to 30-plus years of so-called trickle-down economics and Reaganomics has destroyed this country economically. You know, whenever, I don't know if anyone listened to the uh, Michelle Bachman uh, Tea Party speech or, or the or the Paul Ryan Republican counter I listen. Speech. I listen to Paul Ryan. Yeah, I, I mean, both of them are just full of crap. You know what I'm saying? The, the, party, the, the points that they bring up are all the problems of their party. You know what I'm saying? We're at, our nation is at a crossroads where we haven't been at at least in maybe 20 years, where China and India really do have a chance of giving us a run for our money. Right, And see, David, I mean, I'm so glad that you got to that point because that's the exact, when I was watching last night, what I noticed was that the speech wasn't for us. It was for other nations. Um, His speech, basically, I was like, it sounded like more of a campaign speech to me. Like, okay, we're at the middle right here, and this is my ploy to let other countries know that what what we're about to do. So to get us 
back to the fact that we can well i think jobs have been created but we had to reach out to other countries now because we need them more than anything right but once again republican party politics have put us have cornered us into this position you know eight years of outsourcing under bush you know whenever you call up somebody for tech support that used to be college jobs yeah with jobs over in India. Mm-hmm. You know, the steel industry in Pittsburgh was dismantled and sent over to Asia, especially yeah. Korea. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The auto industry was dismantled and sent overseas only to be sent right back, you know, with BMW plants in Greenville, mm-hmm. the Kia plant in and, and, and West Point, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are all Republican Party politics. And when they say China, China is a beast that they have specifically created. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It was Nixon that opened up China, Mr. Republican. Yep. Uh-huh. It was uh, Goldwater, Mr. Uh, you know, free trade capitalism that reached out to China. And then when Tiananmen Square happened, there was a real opportunity there for Bush number one to you know, hit him hard on human rights. And we didn't at all. We, we threw him a softball. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And now they want President Obama, and, and that's we the funny nothing. part. Now they're expecting him to. But the, that's what you said. We we did nothing. But now they want this president to say something. Now you say something. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like jump up here and say something. But when you had the opportunity to play big and bad with people that it really mattered for our nation as far as you our growth, you know what I'm saying, as far as our growth was concerned, they didn't want to do that. Now they want us to play bad, Billy Bad, but with people like Iraq and Afghanistan, with the other monsters they helped create. And it's not fair because only thing, underlying things are the things that we can get from Afghanistan and Iraq. But the things that are apparent that we can get from China, now you want us to do it. You get what I'm saying? Hey, why hey, one, hey you cut out there one second. Uh, why shoes? Can you hear us? Can y'all hear me? Because I can't hear yeah, you. Yeah, 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 we can we hear, hear you. you. Fine. Can you hear us? Oh, white shoes. That's that Metro. That sound like that Metro. Ladies and gentlemen, Metro is a cheap-ass phone in any country, probably. White shoes. But they sound yeah, I can barely hear you. Okay. Um, hang up and call right back. I can hear you perfectly now. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, you, that's you don't that have metro, your network. Homie. Is your network with you? I'm, I'm just on a regular uh, phone line oh. from the house. Oh, okay. Hey, um, White Shoes, let me ask you a question, man. What did you think about Obama saying uh, have the millionaires give up their tax breaks so they don't have to take away from college? Oh, I mean, smart. you know, I think it's not going far enough. If you look into that golden age of America from the 50s to the 60s when yeah. our wealth and power and influence was unparalleled, we had a, like a tax bracket of 90%. You know, uh-huh. and they still lived in opulence and wealth. You know, there's only so much that fifteen billion dollars can buy you over and over and over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, but the key players. You, I mean, go ahead. I mean, I'm sorry. You've got Arabs and, and Russians like getting diamond encrusted steering wheels. You know what I'm saying? Dumb like, there's stuff. only so many ways you can accessorize to spend your fifteen billion dollars a year. Yeah. So yes, this wealth needs to be reallocated. But the thing is, the people that, that we would reach out to, the Warren Buffets, the Bill Gates, they're cool with it. Ted Turner's, they're cool with paying the money. They want to be taxed. So the funny, like, they're and Who's they're fighting eons, it? That's what I want to The people know. that aren't close to what they got, the, the ones that are eons or, or that are worried about their kid. To me, let me say, let me get, not go get. What I loved about the David Buffets and the Bill Gates were. Warren Buffett. And I mean, yeah, Warren Buffett, David Buffett, music, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, moving on. I love the fact that they said that they would make their kids work. It's not just about passing wealth on, but you got to work for it. So if we stand for the, the same things that we stand on, to me, in the Democratic Party, they want to push that to other countries. And it's just what you want to show. So I can't say that I'm, you know, for my kids not working just to hand them something. You know what I'm saying? So it's white shoes. I just love your ethic and your the way that you bring out the political. Because I'm all about what you talk about most of the time. Hey, hey, I yeah. really appreciate that. And not only that, I just want to uh, say first off, thank y'all for having me on your show as well. This is my first ever radio appearance. So once again, I am going uh-huh. to edit this, send this to you, homeboy. We like to really get you in on anything 
when it comes to uh, politics. I really appreciate your views and the people watching and listening. The views and opinions of White Shoes are not the views and opinions of the Tony and Griff show. But man, I love opinionated people. And then more than that, I love people who know what they're talking about. I had some time to really sit and chop it up with White Shoes uh, about a number of things. And politics the 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 dude ain't no joke man one last thing before we let you go um tony might have a question too but um i one last thing what is obama's plan when he's always being so personal like when he he goes into these stories about you know the people in the room and it was a it was a company out of pennsylvania and they helped make the shingles for the pentagon and it's a lady here right now that is uh, going back to college to show her kids she can go to college. And it's a man, when he does those things, white shoes, is that him kind of almost lobbying for himself? Like, you know, while y'all here in this State of the Union, 2012 was around the corner. You know, it just it, it just depends on, uh, I guess, like the preconceived heart that you have before you go into it you know that? because my family is split 50 50 we're half liberal uh democrats and then other half is like conservative tea party republicans and you know whenever you asked me to be on this show I, I gave a quick call real you know quick calls to some of my family members and you know the republican ones were just like oh he's a fake it's a fraud and blah 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 <laughs> and then you know the democrats and the liberals were just like you know he mentioned this company out of Pennsylvania, which is where half my family. And from. I know you from Pittsburgh, black and yellow, black and yellow. Yeah, please believe. <laughs> so you know that I had some family members, you know, through that area mention that because you know they had said that you know that's close to home. You're hitting home there, right? And uh, yeah, once again, it just it, it just depends on uh, whether you like the man or not because it's one or the other in America today. You either love your president or you hate your president. I know that. Don't right. be fooled. There's no real in between. Well, what? Ah, oh, that's sad. But the fun. I just want to. I got a real girl question. Um, what did you think about all the colors and everybody sitting together? Like it wasn't a like last night. It was a rainbow effect in the room. How did you feel <laughs> yeah, about it? Yeah, was it? a. It was date night. Is what yeah, they yeah, said. Yeah, that's what they it. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I was waiting for John Boner to cry in the background. <laughs> that dude that's always crying. Boy, is it Boehner? Boehner, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was looking so crazy. <laughs> he looked like, to me, uh, and Boehner is the new um, oh, Speaker of the, of the House. House. Boehner sat behind, and it, and maybe it's just me and how I think, but it seemed like Boehner looked like those people in the choirs that fall asleep behind the pastor. It looked like <laughs> yeah, every yeah. now and then he was kind of like, oh, yeah, um. Oh, that's a good one, President. Oh, 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 John <laughs> Boner. John Boner. Right. And, it, and right. what's up with all these Republican Party names with innuendos? The speaker before him, and you can Google this, was Dick Army. What kind of name is that? Was it? it it's, it's all sexual Dick innuendo. Army. Dick Army. You can't Dick make Army. that up. <laughs> right. Hey, White Shoes, we appreciate you calling, man. Um, where can people holler at you at on Facebook? I know you go real hard on Facebook. What's your Facebook slash what? It's uh, David White Shoes Rudnick, and it's R-U-D-N-I-C-K, and it ain't Redneck. It's Rudnick. It's, a, it's an old Yiddish last name. We appreciate that, man. We'll put that up. I'm going to edit this and get that back to you, partner. Thank you for calling. You will hear from us again, ladies and gentlemen. David White Shoes Rudnick on the phone. Appreciate you, homeboy. Woo! Thank you, man. Good job. I appreciate y'all. Great day. <laughs> Let's sing it, baby.